Hi, this video is going to show you how to install Velocitec Control Center on your Windows XP or Vista computer. If I'm ever going too fast, remember that you can always hit the pause button on your YouTube player to take a break. Velocitec Control Center allows you to customize the device settings on any Velocitec device. It also allows you to download and replay GPS data from a single Velocitec device. You should also be aware of our other more advanced program, Velocitec Speedplay. Speedplay is what you need if you're working with multiple Velocitec devices to create race replays. With Speedplay, you can automatically import map backgrounds from Microsoft Virtual Earth. Installing Velocitec Control Center is the subject of this video. To install Velocitec Control Center, first go to our website, Velocitec.com. And then click on the Products link up here in the blue menu bar, and then click on Control Center in the gray menu bar. Then scroll down here to the free download button. Then you'll see this pop-up form. Fill in your name and email address. All this other information is optional. We use it when we're designing new products. It helps us out to know who our customers are. If you don't want to fill it out, just scroll down here and click Submit. That'll send you to this page where you can download the actual program by clicking on the red button. You'll see a window that looks something like this pop up. I'm using Firefox here. If you're using some other browser, the window might look a bit different, but it will have essentially the same options. Choose to save the file. Save it somewhere where you'll be able to find it. I'm going to put it on my desktop. I can see that the file is downloading down here. Once that file is finished downloading, hold down the Windows logo key in the bottom left hand corner of your keyboard and press the E key while holding down the Windows logo key. This will launch Windows Explorer. Navigate to wherever you chose to save setup.exe, in my case the desktop. Once you found the file, double click on it. Now you're probably going to get this scary looking publisher could not be verified warning. This warning comes up because Velocitec is a small company and Microsoft is essentially saying that they've never heard of us. But a few thousand people have installed Velocitec Control Center and we know the software is safe, so go ahead and click a run. The menus that you'll see after this point depend on what you already have installed on your computer. Velocitec Control Center uses two programming frameworks that many newer computers come with pre-installed. The Microsoft.NET framework and the Java Runtime environment. If one or both of these is not already installed on your computer, the Velocitec Control Center installer will automatically download and install them for you. As you go through the installation process, just keep on clicking Next and accept all the default choices. When the installation is complete, you'll see a window that looks like this. Click on the Finish button. Now that Velocitec Control Center is installed on your computer, you can run the program by clicking on the Windows Start icon in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. Then choose All Programs, Velocitec, and then Velocitec Control Center. Then you'll see the Velocitec Control Center window pop up like this. Now make sure you have batteries installed in your Velocitec GPS device and look at the LCD screen to make sure the device is turned on. You can turn on an SC1 by holding down the mode and the minus button like this. When you see zero, let go and that'll turn the device on. You can also quickly turn on an SC1 by pulling out two of its batteries and then putting them back in place. If you have a speed puck, you can turn it on just by pressing the big square button at the bottom of the LCD. Once your Velocitec device is turned on and the LCD screen isn't blank, connect it to your computer using the USB cable that came with it. What happens when you first connect your Velocitec to your computer depends on whether your PC is running Microsoft Vista or XP. If you're using Vista, you'll see a bubble appear in the bottom right hand corner of your screen as Windows automatically installs the driver for your device. If you're using Windows XP, you'll need to go through a simple driver installation procedure using the Windows Add New Hardware Wizard. A tutorial showing this procedure is available at velocitech.com slash support slash getting hyphen started. Once the driver installation is complete, look here in the firmware version field. If you have a brand new SC1, it should say V2.2 Basic. If your SC1 has been used before, it might say something else. If the text in this field says unknown, then your Velocitec device is not communicating properly with your PC. You can normally fix this by unplugging your Velocitec and double checking that it has batteries installed and that it's turned on. 
If that doesn't work, try connecting the Velocitec device to a different USB port on your computer. Another thing to watch out for is if you have an SC1 connected to your computer, but it says S10 in this field here. This problem is caused by a production defect in some of our early SC1s. You can fix the problem by going to velocitech.com slash support slash utilities and then downloading the FTDI chip reprogramming kit. Once you've downloaded the zip folder that contains the kit, unzip the folder and open the Word document in the folder. Now that you have Velocitech Control Center installed and communicating properly with your Velocitech device, you can use it to update the firmware on your Velocitech to make it show more than just speed and heading. Customize the device settings on your Velocitech to get it working exactly the way you want. Download GPS data and launch single boat replay animations in GPS Action Replay. To see a demonstration of how all this is done, please check out our Velocitech Control Center 101 tutorial video. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video.